Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Armstrong. My name is Jake Smith, and we've been working with Dr. Rocha in the chemistry laboratory in order to develop new and more effective tuberculosis medication. All right. So, here we are. So, the reason that we're doing this research is the main reason is essentially antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance has been an issue ever since antibiotics were introduced. As you can see in this graphic, antibiotic resistance to penicillin was identified bef well before antibiotics or like were used commercially or whenever penicillin was used as a medication. So this here's a timeline of various antibiotics being introduced in how long it took for certain bacteria to become resistant to them. And so, like Dan said, we re are researching tuberculosis. It's a bacteria that's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it's usually a respiratory disease and can be contagious and spread through the air. It is treatable, however, it can become deadly. And there are two types of tuberculosis contrary to common belief. There's the actual tuberculosis disease that is active and can cause symptoms and spread to others. And then there's actually a latent TB infection where patients who have this do not feel sick and they don't have symptoms and they can't spread the tuberculosis to others. But their disease can become active and they will then become sick with tuberculosis and have the active TB disease. And millions of people in the U.S. have this latent disease and they don't even know it. So this adds the importance of our research. So this map shows the emergence of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis or MDR-TB. MDR-TB is characterized by resistance to uh, two main antibiotics like isoniazid and rifamycin. And the more that these cases emerge, the like the less that medical professionals can do about a tuberculosis case. And so it's really becoming a race to pump out new antibiotics before bacteria become resistant to them. Okay, so millions and millions of people are affected every year from TB. And as you can see, according to the World Health Organization, in 2018, about 10 million people became ill with tuberculosis. And approximately 1.5 million people died from TB. So 15% uh, mortality rate is fairly high for a disease like this. And as you can see below this, we have listed some of the prices per case of tuberculosis. And as you can see, uh, tuberculosis that's not drug resistant at all will run about $19,000. Multi-drug resistant tuberculosis can be Quite a, quite a bit more than that at 164,000. And like the most drug-resistant tuberculosis you can find runs about $526,000 per case. So rifamycins are the main antibiotic that we work with in our laboratory. Uh, they were originally developed in the 1960s and they are a member of the amsomycin family. And they work by inhibiting bacterial RNA synthesis so that the bacteria effectively cannot synthesize proteins and die. Uh, however, like all the other antibiotics, rifamycins can become, or tuberculosis bacteria can become resistant to rifamycins. And multidrug resistant tuberculosis is characterized by the resistance to iso isoanid and rifamycins. So in our lab, we are like, what we usually do on a typical day is a is working with rifamycin derivatives, like finding mechanisms to produce derivatives of rifamycin and purifying what we've made. And this is a picture that Dr. Arosha took of Jake and I. And so the main chemical pathway that we take advantage of in our research is the click chemistry mechanism, uh, copper assisted. And uh, if you don't understand this graphic, that's totally fine. It's just explaining how we are able to make large substituents or large additions to rifamycin without 
altering the main body of it. And so it occurs through the reaction of an azide or an N3 functional group and an alkyne to form a 1,2,3 triazole. And this reaction proceeds very quickly and with high yields. And it's a, the click mechanism has been very important in the drug discovery fields for, for a good while. So the chemistry that actually happens involves changing an OH hydroxy functional group and rifamycin to an azide functional group, which is a N3. And this azide functionality adds functionality to the molecule that can then go through click chemistry and add alkynes. So currently we're working with a total of five different alkynes. We've successfully synthesized five different rifamycin derivatives by adding the alkyne to rifamycin S and then adding five different alkynes to that modified rifamycin S. And so we've made several derivatives with large substituents. And so for the future, uh, currently I'm not able to be in the lab, but Dan is purifying all of the new compounds that we made using chromatography methods. And then after this is finished, uh, biological assays will be performed to determine the effectiveness of our new drug molecules. Thank you all for watching. Thank you.